This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2020 Palomino Solaire model 260 FKBS. All right, I'm here on the door side of the trailer walking towards the rear. Okay, just I'll turn the corner here for a second just so you know there's a quick connect here for LP uh, for a grill or a griddle or whatever low pressure gas appliance you use back there so that's hooked right to the LP tank it's plural and you have um, scissor type stabilizers they work with a crank or a three-quarter inch socket on a drill which is what most people use these days you got a super wide power awning with LED strip now your stairs both fold in to the trailer. They're very stable. If you're on uneven terrain, you can tip pull this pin right here. Let me see if you can see it here. This one right here, you can pull it out and adjust the legs. All right, this, this door goes into your bedroom, of course. Um, the other door will go into the living area. You've got outside speakers. Uh, you got a antenna out plus power plus a TV mount if you want to hang a TV outside. You have a refrigerator, works a 110 AC, so it, as soon as you plug in it's ready to go. You have a little work area. Oh, I see, I'm not pulling that all the way out. There we go. And um, a convection cooktop. Okay, let me just look inside here, see what we got, so I don't forget anything here. Okay, okay. So, you, you can cook outside, obviously. You got a place to hook up a grill, plus a convection cooktop, plus refrigerator. Okay, so this right here is the vent for your range hood. You got a fan on your range hood. Um, now you can see there's a baffle in there that can flap freely. Right now it's open so it'll flap freely. If you're using the fan, you want it to be like that. You want it to be able to vent. Otherwise, you're just going to push it and snap it shut. All right, that's just a vent for your furnace. This is your water heater. Okay, works on both gas and electric. Um, I want you to see that there is a switch here if you can see it right there, it's a rocker switch. This rocker switch, um, basically, there's, behind this cover right here is an electric heating element, and that switch operates it. So to turn it on electric, you flip that switch. It's in the lower left-hand corner. Um, always make sure there's water in your water tank before you turn it on. Now, you can also run this on gas, and the switch for the gas is inside. Also, that is your drain plug right there takes an inch and a sixteen socket to drain it. All right. You always want to bypass your water heater before you winterize it. Because uh, you can't get antifreeze into the water tank or leave a foul taste and bad smell. So make sure you always bypass your water heater. All right. So this is just a hookup for a, a solar panel. If you wanted to purchase a solar panel that will charge the battery. Doesn't run the trailer or anything. Just charges the battery. Uh, this particular one is made by Furion, so that's an option. You have two tanks, two LP tanks, a deep cycle marine battery. This is a kill switch for your battery. So basically it'll disconnect the battery from the system. The reason you might want to do that is if you put it in storage for any period of time, even if you shut all the lights out, the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector, for example, are hardwired to the battery, so they'll still draw power. This way you can put it into storage and shut it off, shut the battery off, so you don't, it doesn't drain down. Not as quickly as it would anyway if you didn't. So, All right, so this is the water station here. Um, the most common way to get water in this trailer is right here, the city water hookup. Okay, so you just hook your hose on there and you're turning on, you're ready to go. Now, if you go to a, a campground that does not have 
plumbing on the cab site, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here. It's got an onboard tank and you can fill it right there and carry the water with you and use the electric pump inside to, to pump your water. So it'll work just like you have city water, uh, but you don't. But like I said, nine times out of 10, you're gonna have, you're just gonna use the city water hookup. Okay, going past your slide room here, you have a galley tank drain. Oh, let me get down here. Galley tank is just a second gray tank. So you can see it right there. Okay. Um, right there. Okay. Back on my feet here. This one here is your your black tank. Let me make sure we're, we're, we got this right here. I'm thinking that this is probably the uh, second gray tank here and the other one over there is the is the gray and the black I'll, I'll confirm that in a minute the bottom line is you always pull the black tank valve first because um, it's toilet water and waste the gray tank is and then the gray tank is, is uh, sink and shower water so you pull the black tank first because the, the toilet water and waste is obviously dirtier than the, than the sink and shower water. So you just use the, uh, the uh, gray water tank to sort of clean out the hose and stuff for the black water. And then second, um, you have a black tank flush right here. So you hook a hose right up to there. You can see there's a sticker that tells you you want the black tank valve open before you uh, turn on the water. But if you... If you do that, you put it on there, turn it on, it'll spray the inside of your black tank, and it'll clean it out, clean the sensors off, that sort of thing. Yeah, so I've uh, confirmed it. This is actually, going back to where we were, this is your black tank and your gray tank valve here, okay? When the slide out's in, you'll be able to get to it much easier, obviously, okay? This is just a, uh, outside shower sprayer, uh, hot and cold water for kids and dogs and feet and what have you. This is a 50 amp system, so you got a 50 amp, 30 foot cord. It would give you the reducers to reduce it down to 30 amp and then down to 15. Okay. Satellite and cable through and just a hookup light here. All right. Simple enough. Which is some storage. Okay. So. This housing means it's pre-wired for a backup camera. If you want to get one, we do sell them. You can talk to our parts people. Either way, you have to get the Furion camera that fits into that housing, no matter where you buy it from. So keep in mind, if you purchase one, it has to fit right in that housing and may be made by Furion. Also, while we're looking up, you've got a ladder here. You have to inspect your roof at least three times a season. So you're going to go up there in the spring. You go up there in the fall. Once in the middle of the summer, and you'll inspect all the seals on the roof. Uh, make sure there's no crack in your separation. Some year, sometime when you go up there, you're going to have to do touch-up. That's why you're inspecting it. You don't know when that's going to be. So make sure you inspect it uh, three times a season at least. And uh, if it needs to be touched up, get it taken care of immediately. Oh, someone has the air conditioner running in here. Look at that. Okay. I'll just get some light here. Okay. So I just turned on your awning LED strip. You got them on the arms here. All right, so this is your control panel. So battery is charged. Always check it when you're not plugged in, though. Fresh water is two thirds because we're water testing. We'll dump it. Black tank is empty. Gray tank one is empty. Gray tank two is empty. You just have two gray tanks in this one. This is this one doesn't apply. Um, I told you, you could run this on gas or electric, the water heater I'm referring to. If you want to light it on gas, it's right here. There's the fault light right there. To operate your water pump, if you have onboard water in your fresh water tank, you use that. You also use that water pump for winterizing. All right, so the awning extend is very simple. You're just gonna push that and out it goes. Okay, I'll bring it back in. You just roll it out. It goes out eight feet, so you roll it out until you can see the awning tube. Never leave the awning out unattended, so if you're not going to be at the campsite, 
you're going to uh, roll it in so it doesn't get damaged by the wind. You've got two slide rooms, just push them in and out. Um, you'll keep your finger on it till you hear a ratcheting sound coming in and coming out. That's how you know it's all the way extended or retracted. All right. This device here is a power converter. It converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. So here you see you got regular 110 AC household type circuit breakers and they're all labeled, right? Then up here you got 12 volt uh, fuses that are labeled. So basically it converts this, it takes in 110 AC at this side and then converts the rest of the power to 12 volt DC up here, all right? It also will charge your battery when you're plugged in so it'll keep your battery charged up. Alrighty, I think that covers it right there. Okay, and then you have obviously storage here. This pan is an induction type pan for your induction cooktop, just so you know. That's that's a special pan. I'm sure you know about that sort of thing. <coughs> okay, excuse me. This is your um, thermostat here. So you're just going to hit the mode button once to light it up. See, we're on cool auto. Always try to run it on auto anytime you can. All right, but you go heat and then off. I'll keep going. Fan, auto, or fan low and high and cool, low and high and auto. So fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. Cool obviously is the air conditioner. And heat is the furnace, and that's off. So I'm gonna let it go off. There's a lag time. You saw when I shut it off and how long it took for this to shut off. There could be up to five seconds, maybe even a little more sometimes before it responds. Just to make sure you uh, are aware of that because sometimes it seems like it's not working, but it just takes a little time. Okay, the TV works like any other TV. Um, let me just look up here real quick. Okay. All right, so this, let me look in here. That's just a charge station, obviously. Um, so you have a, a disc player and radio here. Uh, you can play CDs and DVDs in here. You can stream off this USB here. You can put a stick in there with all your favorite albums on it and take them with you, for example. You can hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth with your phone or tablet. So it's going to, uh, you know, you can stream video or, or, or music, MP3s or radio or whatever you stream. Uh, you can do it that way. You've got two different speaker zones. One is inside, two is outside. So it covers, excuse me, it does a lot of things for considering you're camping. Um, your fireplace runs on 110 AC electricity. So it'll, it basically has two fan speeds. You can adjust the, the look of the flame. You can set the thermostat. It's a really good space heater. So on those mornings or evenings when it's not, you know, when it's not super cold out, uh, but you still need some heat, you can just run this and you'll be using your campground electricity instead of using up your LP in your tank. So you can save your LP for cooking and, and furnace when you really need it, okay? So, so that's good. Um, all right, back on my feet here. This is a hundred or this is a 12 volt DC compressor refrigerator. So it'll run when you're pulling it down the road. Your alternator from your tow vehicle will keep it going and your battery. Um, when you're plugged in, your power converter will convert down to 12 volts and keep it running. So it'll, uh, it'll, uh, it, it, it's, it's similar to a gas absorption in that this will run on 12 volt, but it's a lot deeper. There's a lot more cubic feed in it, so a lot of people really like this better. There's more storage space in your fridge. This device here is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It detects carbon monoxide buildup or LP gas. Uh, it should always be green like that. If it's not, you want to uh, get it serviced. So if it goes off, obviously you're going to get everybody out, shut your gas off at the front and then figure out what's going on. Also if it beeps very, very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. All right, so your range. I think the gas is on. Let's see here. Give it a minute. Yes. So you just turn it on like so. To spark it, you turn this clockwise like that. Okay. So you got three burners that operate like that. Then you have your oven. Now the oven. There's a pilot light way down here. Let me just see if I can get you a picture of it. Okay, it's way back there. So, you need a grill lighter to light that. 
Uh, let me make double check to make sure. Hold on. Yes. So you have to use a grill lighter to light this one. So what you do is you come over here to the awning, or the awning, the oven knob. You go to pilot, right? And then you depress it and hold it. Then you'll take your light, lighter, you use a uh, grill lighter with a long neck, and you light the pilot light back there. After it lights, you're still holding this in. It's still depressed. Uh, so you, after it lights, you'll hold it for another 10 or 15 seconds. Then you go to operating temperature. It'll cycle on and off like a regular oven does. But when you go back to off, the flame goes out, obviously, but so does the pilot light. So you have to light it each time before you use the oven. Always keep your glass cover down when you're traveling or you'll break it. The microwave works like any other microwave. This is your range hood fan I told you about. Remember what I told you about the baffle outside? Okay, sink works like any other sink, of course. You can turn your, your dinette table into a bed or your dinette booth into a bed. You pull the poles out. You drop the top onto these pleats here and then fill in the space with the cushions. Uh, this one here, let's see what we got. Jackknife's flat, so you got another bed right there, which is pretty good. Okay, the, the shower and sink work like any other shower and sink. Keep in mind this GFCI is here. All the plugs are wired to a GFCI, even the one on the outside. So if you're using a coffee pot outside, for example, and it pops, you're going to reset it in here. Okay, the thing to know about the bathroom is the toilet is has a flush pedal right here. The black tank is directly below. All right, um, there's no water hooked up right now, so it's not filling like it would when you flush it. But the bottom line is you can't run it without chemical and a little bit of water in it to start off with. So when you get to your campsite, you pull in there, obviously, you stabilize your trailer, you plug it in, you hook up the water, then you're going to come in here. You're going to take whatever chemical you use, whatever brand you use, you'll put one dose right in there, then you'll step on the pedal, water will come swirling out, and you're going to put about a gallon or two of water in there. There's no way to tell that by a monitor panel or anything, you just have to use common sense. Yeah, that's about a gallon or two, okay? The, so the thing is, you've got to have chemical water. Let's say you're going to stay at the same campsite, and uh, you had another week, but you had to dump your tank. So you would dump your black tank. And because you're going to stay at the same campsite, you come back in here and repeat that procedure. Chemical and about a gallon or so of water, two gallons in that general area. Okay. All right. In the bedroom. Also, one more thing, the fan. You have a fan here with your vent. You always want to run that with the shower because you don't want uh, the humidity to build up inside the trailer. Okay. Let me just shut there because we're going to be moving this. I don't want it to get broke on something. There we go. All right, so um, obviously you have a, a wardrobe here. These, it's not snap. Yeah, you snap it all the way shut like that, so it doesn't. There you go. So it doesn't uh, move around when you're traveling. So you got antenna, power, and then you a backer plate here. So if you put a, a TV in here, you'd want one obviously that swings out this way towards the bed. Just try and spend the extra money and get one that locks into place. Uh, when it's closed, that way you don't have to use a strap. You just lock it in place. It's a much cleaner install. And you have some storage under here. Right under there. Like a foot locker. Okay. And, of course, a vent. Now, you can add vent covers to these vents if you ever choose to, which will uh, allow you to keep them open when it's raining. Or when you put it in storage for the winter, you can keep all your vents open just a crack to get some airflow. All right, so I think I covered it all here. Let me look around. Um, it's an emergency exit there, obviously. These blinds you're just going to pull down. Now, if they ever loosen up so they won't stay uh, in a position you leave them in, if they just drop down during transit or um, just period drop down, keep in mind that this tension string here, um, the tighter the string is, the tighter this will be. So if it's just falling down, you don't have to get it serviced if you're out west somewhere traveling. You can just pull this string through this spool here and tie a knot about a half out inch or so farther down, or farther up actually. So it makes this a little tighter, just a little bit tighter, and that'll solve your problem. So it's easy to adjust them. Okay, so as I look around, I'm going to see if I forgot anything. I don't think I did. 
Okay, well, so um, first of all, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, if you have issues, you can give us a call. We'll work with you, set up a service appointment, talk you through it, whatever we need to do. Keep in mind that there's a manual for every appliance in here. Also, you can go online and use manufacturer's videos, which are a great way to learn. Uh, they're also accurate. It's try to st don't stay away from the third-party videos, but if you've got the option between, a, you know, let's say the, the range video from the manufacturer, which is Suburban, over somebody else, I would just stick with the Suburban video, obviously. So, okay. Well, like I said, thanks a lot, and make sure you inspect your roof three times a year at least. You always bypass your water heater, and thank you very much.